Hello there, my lovelies on Facebook. Hello there to my gorgeous peeps on Instagram. So good to see you all. We have just come through quite the snowstorm here on in the Northeast. Um, so things got a little wonky here. My team is virtual, but Mr. H, who lives here and is also our director of operations, he and I have been muscling through. I just ran up from the design studio working on a gorgeous, glammy bedroom for one of our clients in a new build that we're doing. And every Tuesday here at IDH, we stop what we're doing to come out here and teach you a lesson. They call me the interior design advocate because in addition to running a luxury interior design company, I also run a fantastic online course coaching uh, brand for design lovers. And I put out these great courses filled with strategies and formulas in interior design that absolutely move the needle for women and men working on their own homes who really want to move the needle. You're tired of spinning your wheels. You're tired of feeling frustrated. So my courses are phenomenal. And as a way to give back for people who have not ever taken my courses, maybe, you know, it's, it's not a good move for you in your life right now with all that you have going on. A way for me to give back is to come out here every Tuesday, stop what we're doing at our studio, 4 p.m., and I come out here and I teach a lesson on something. These are informal chats, like fireside chats, minus the fire, minus the hot cocoa. And uh, I take your questions on that topic. These are not visual. If you want visual online learning, then by all means, check out one of my online courses, which are totally very visual. And you can also look at some of our videos on our YouTube channel. All right, so what are we talking about this week? We are talking this week about accessorizing a bathroom. So you'll see in my little, little ampy thing at the beginning, my little, my little, whatever, my description, I say that accessorizing a bathroom, is like tweezing your eyebrows, overdo it, you will screw it up. Tell me about it. Has anybody here ever like chopped off half your brow or you got too thin on your brows that is? Not good. Well, when you over accessorize a bathroom, which is generally the bigger problem than under accessorizing a bathroom, you just muck everything up. It's not good. Don't do it. So we're going to talk a little bit about this topic and then I'll be happy to take your questions on this topic as well. So let's start with the little teeny weeny bathrooms, the powder rooms. In general, less is best in a powder room. Do you want to know why wallpaper is so popular in powder rooms? Because there's not a lot of room to do other things in the in a powder room. So wallpaper your powder room. Yes, do something cool on the ceiling. Do something cool on the walls with it. What the hey? Because when it comes to how much room you have in your powder room, the answer is not very much. So you have to always in any in any bathroom think about function first, and then you have to make that beautiful. So yes, anything you need in the bath. The, the dish soap, soap dispenser, the, the, the waste pa paper basket, the, um, the tissue holder. Yeah, definitely make those beautiful. They don't have to all match. They should coordinate, but you don't need to do the whole set from Bed Bath & Beyond, right? You can mix things up a little bit, making sure that there's good marriage between them, particularly from what's going to be on countertop down to your waste, bas waste, waste basket. And then if you have room for anything extra, there probably won't be much room. If you have a small powder room, you might have room for a candle. You might have room for a small plant. You might have room for like a small paperweight in glass next to the dish soap, uh, you know, the hand soap dispenser. That probably could be just about it by the time you're all done. Try to avoid, if you can, those things that protrude from the wall, the things that are over the top of the of the, the, the tank of the toilet, uh, the shelving. I, I have very mixed feelings on shelving in powder rooms. I think if, the, if it's done really well, it can look good. It has to be really well merchandised, meaning well accessoried, well styled, but it's very easy to screw that up and just create a lot of clutter. I think a great opportunity in a powder room is a nice giant piece of artwork, bigger than you might even think you could do. It makes a big, big splash. But if you're doing a renovation to a powder room, by all means, think about doing a really interesting feature wall in a tile, in a wallpaper, um, or just in millwork, and then paint that millwork. All right, like floor to ceiling, recess paneling, mm, very good looking. All right, so that's the powder room. So then you bump up in size and you get to the guest bath. Well, now you have water use, a lot of it, right? You've got a shower, so wallpaper, mm, not so not so good in there. 
some people talk about doing it. I've, I've heard designers talk about it and at CPE courses. I'm just not a fan. I'd rather avoid the problem and just do what's other wonderful things. There again, artwork can become your friend in a guest bath as well. But now, again, you're going to repeat everything I just told you from the powder room, but you might have a little more space, right? So you might have room for a pair of something, a pair of like medium, like medium and, and large vases that coordinate and they sit somewhere on that long run of countertop. You might have room for a larger plant. But try to underdo versus overdo and definitely try to protect negative space. Do you guys know what negative space is? If you spent any time with me here, you probably do. It means a rest. It means a spot where nothing is happening. Negative space is as important in design and the finished product in a space as what you fill it with. I was working on this master bedroom down in Studio B and as I'm working on it, I'm looking at how I'm driving color through the space, looking at a lot of things, but I'm also considering where is there a rest? Do I have enough rest? Um, and where do I, where do I need to lessen the negative space? Where do I need to increase the negative space? So in a bathroom, negative space is a good thing, especially a guest bath that gets a lot of usage. You know, if your kids are still home or uh, a lot of use, I should say, your kids are still home or if, get, when guests come in, you know, the makeup bag goes out there, the hair dryer, the tweezers, We're talking about eyebrows earlier. Um, so just leave room for people to kind of do their thing. Um, something else you can do in a guest bath that can look quite handsome, and some people will do it in a larger powder room, you can take washcloths and put them in a basket and roll them, and that's what people use to, uh, to dry their hands. But then you need something to, receptacle to put them into, and now we've just increased your laundry, unless you have the guy doing it for you, all right, if you have a, a staff. All right, so now you go to the master bath. Now we have more space. So with the master bath, Ditto what I said about the guest bath, high water environment, don't want wallpaper there. But now you can keep your accessory count small, but you can increase the size of those accessories. So you might have room in your master bath for a floor plant. You might to the side of a tub. Why not? It doesn't have to be a five footer. It can be something in that three foot or two foot range or, a, or four foot, you know. And you might have room, if you're doing a freestanding tub, you might have room for a small table called a martini table. And those are usually quite small in diameter, you know, 10 inches, 8 inches, 11 inches around. And then nothing needs to go on top of it. It's really there so that when you're taking your lovely bath, you have a place to put your book or your cup of tea or a place to light your candle, okay? So you don't feel like you, the table itself becomes the accessory. The mistake people make is they think automatically they have to accessorize that table. Not so. You don't have to. You can. Depends on the situation. But look to the table to be the candy, the eye candy. But here again, look for negative space on the countertops of a master bath. Look for opportunity on the walls to do something interesting with sizable artwork. But try to keep your accessory count lower, but the sizes of things can get a little bit larger. Fewer things making a larger and bigger statement. So. If you have questions on accessorizing a bath, I'm happy to take them. By all means, pop them in there, and I'm happy to, to scroll through. While giving you time to do that, I'll tell you what we're working on next week. We're talking about what to look for in an ideal dining room table. Next week, we're talking about what to look for in an ideal new dining room table or if you're reusing your own and trying to repurpose it. And if you missed any portion of this Facebook Live and Instagram Live, you can always find us on YouTube. We are the Interior Design Advocate on YouTube. And if you're not following us on Instagram, hey, Facebook, you're missing the party. We're at decorating. We're, at de we're having technical problems today, can you tell? At decorating.genius. Yeah, that at decorating.genius is, is us. And if you want to know what we're doing in our luxury design studio, you can find us at IDH Designs. That's I, at IDH Designs. And on that feed, I do more, um, you know, I'll try to take you into the design studio or onto a, into a job site and that sort of thing. So, all right. So let's see what's on your gorgeous minds. And if we don't have any questions, I am happy to wrap early. And I will scooch back up down into the studio a little earlier than I had expected. So let's see. So we're getting hellos. We're getting hi from Noor and from Jacqueline and from Tanya and from Cheryl. Lots of hellos. Hello from sunny Miami from Jerry. Hey, Jerry, rub it in. <laughs> hi, Jerry. And hi, girls. Good to see everybody here. 
Audrey's here from Myrtle Beach. Becky's here from Birmingham. Again, Becky's here. Yay. Lisa's here from Houston. My family in Houston, like Houston a lot. Uh, hugs from Donna in Sharpsburg, Georgia. Hugs to you, Donna, from Sharpsburg, Georgia, from Jan. Hey, Jan, hugs back to you, kiddo. And I'm um, getting a lot of hellos. Jennifer McCann is saying she's uh, hoping I'm staying warm. Jen, I'm freezing my bananas off until it turns into May up here. I'm just going to be cold. That is just what it is. All right, but thank you. I hope you're well, and I hope your cute little son Reese is doing well, too. Okay, Linda is asking me, what are your thoughts on painting a small room with no window, a half bath, all white or all dark ceilings and walls? So a half bath, small half bath with no windows, painting it all white or all dark ceilings and walls. Okay, I think it's really a great question. So I think getting jiggy with your paint, doing something really interesting and dark and saturated in a powder room is really exciting and I've done it in rooms that had no window. Um, I ha I love it. I think it can be great. I, I'd love to know what your counters and cabinetry are um, but without seeing that as a as a general question, general answer, I love it. I did a really interesting dark wallpaper uh, in a powder room not too long ago, an interior powder room meaning no, no windows and we took, we also made the inside of the door a really vibrant black paint, um, tricorn black, real beautiful gloss, as well as all of the trim base and crown went to that same glossy black. Oh, so good. Tricorn black, favorite black paint or among them. So I bless it, Linda, without seeing pictures. Um, Chris Bess is saying bath rugs are always on the floor, yes or no? Or bath rugs always on the floor, yes or no? No. No. Um, it depends on the bath you know, Chris, because I think I said your name wrong. It's Chris Bettis. I'm sorry, Chris. Yes. Chris Betts. I'm sorry. Technical problems. Steve's handwriting. My reading. Um, here's a story. So if you have an, a cool inlay in your floor, I'm not inclined to cover that up. So I don't do a bath rug there. I do something that can hang over a towel bar, over a shower bar, uh, you know, a, a shower handle in a mat, in a master bath and in a guest bath. I often don't have a, 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 a mat out. Sometimes I do. It's really, it depends on who's living in the room and how they, in the home and how they want to, you know, deal with it. If you have a shower curtain, it's easy enough to just rest your mat over the side of the tub. But if you have a glass shower door, then the mat can be, you know, in the same material as your towels are that can just hang over the, the glass shower door handle. Um, so I think it's really a matter of preference. I do love the look of a nice, yummy little rug in front of a, a standing bathtub. I think that can be beautiful looking, depending upon the bathroom. You know, um, I, again, that's one of those functional items that, you know, you, you can have it or not have it out for everybody to see. I'm not, I'm not wedded to it. So I don't have an always on that. It, it's a case by case for me. Sorry, Chris. And also, um, Liz, Liz Figueroa wants to know, is it okay to add a tray for perfumes? Yeah, I think that's really pretty. The great thing, great point for Luz, the great thing about trays is that they organize whatever's on top of them. Just make sure you don't have so many perfume bottles that are so squished up in there and it gets so dusty. That looks kind of dingy and pretty quick. But I think a tray is a great way to organize things. And you can break it up a little bit by, there can be, you know, a little bud vase in there. Um, with a little fresh bloom when company comes and then you've got your perfume bottles around it. You know, it doesn't have to just be the perfume bottles or it can be a pretty little little decorative box and then a couple of perfume bottles near it so you can accessorize within the tray. I posted something here on Facebook. Sorry, Insta, I guess you get it through, I don't know, Lincoln, whatever the heck. If you want a terrific, uh, one of my great um, free workshops on accessorization, you are welcome to hop into that link I posted. At the end of that, I do tell you about my online course, Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms with Accessories. So if that works for you, great. If not, just you know, file your nails when I'm talking about that and then just join in for the Q&A at the end. But that's something in terms of accessorization that might also help move the needle for you if, if you're looking for more inspo, as they say. Before I take another Insta question, let me see what else is happening on Facebook. Okay. Hello from California from Nancy Lim. <laughs> but it's warm out there and sunny. Um, hello to you, Nancy. 
Uh, Kimberly is saying, as an editor, negative space is crucial. Hey, uh, Kimberly, we should talk. I want to know what you're an editor of. We're working on one of our books here. Um, what formula of paint should I use? Eggshell? So that's not the formula. Well, yeah, that's okay. Sorry, this formula. Um, eggshell is good. Um, some builders don't like working in eggshell because it shows every flaw if you don't have very well prepped walls. So if you're hiring the person to do it, make sure you have well prepped walls. Tell me you want as close to a level five finish as you can get. And then you can do that. Now, earlier we were talking to Chris. No, not Chris. Who was asking me? Somebody was asking me a dark wall, dark wall color. Who was that? Da, 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 da. That was uh, that was Linda. So if you're going to do a really dark wall, bump it up if you want. I mean, listen, there's this finish. There's a product called Fine, Fine Paints of Europe. It requires a certified app applicator application. I obviously, I'm tired today. It requires a certified painter to be able to put on that application. It's a very unique product. When it's done, it looks like wet, glossy paint. It is so gorgeous looking. So to, to to replicate that without going quite that far, you know, Ben and Sherman, I believe, have both come out with products in the higher gloss series that if you wanted to try to approximate that in a powder room just for fun, you could do it. But you got to make sure you have really well prepped walls. So without getting off topic entirely to answer the question, I was just asked what finish, um, uh, you know, eggshell is always easy or a cashmere always is, is easy uh, in a bath. And it gives a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a lift as opposed to a mat or a flat. Um, okay, Kimberly is saying, what type of art on the walls can hold up in the moisture in a master bedroom? Yes, master bedroom bath. Well, nothing precious, right? You could do photography, black and white photography, blow it up big, frame it. Um, don't do watercolors in there. I think you're really be best off doing prints things that have been re reprinted, meaning things that are not fine art, not original, um, because of that moisture content. In fact, I've talked to a couple of artists and framers who have said vehemently avoid watercolors in, um, in, those, in those high watery environments, and you wouldn't want to put an oil in there either. Um, but if you have a gicle, you know what a gicle is that looks like a painting, looks like a painted acrylic or oil that is really printed on, pulled and stretched that you pull and stretch canvas and then they just laser print it and sometimes people will go in by hand and add a little bit of texture to it but that's usually in the higher cost G clays so what i call bridge what is called bridge price point artwork bridge our artwork doesn't mean it's about bridges it means it bridges the price point between fine art original art to you know stuff that you find in home goods that bridge price point will be things that let's say you go to your local framer and say hey can i look at your catalogs i'm looking for I'm making this up I'm looking for abstracts that are green and white and and they'll open their catalogs to you and you'll pick out something it'll make it a size that you want or you'll google my big I think it's called mybigcanvas.com and make something to the size that you want that is mass produced product but because of the sizes you're dealing with it starts to get a little more costly than the smaller pieces that you see at uh, at home goods so hopefully that answered you well Okay, JB Divine MSJ says, what are the other color trends for bathrooms other than gray? Well, black and white is having a really big moment. Um, and I will tell you, encaustic tile, do you guys know what that is? If you don't Google it, encaustic tile. Encaustic tile is having a real moment, continues to, but I think it's very trendy. So I would be very careful. I wouldn't do it all over your home. I've got a client who wants to do it in her laundry room. She said, how about if we also do it in the bathroom? I said, mm-mm. She said, how about if we also do it on a, on a backsplash? I said, eh, it's good looking, but I think you should just go light. Kind of like, um, what was that big thing, the big trend that's starting to soften up? Shiplap, right? For a while, there, everybody was shiplapping. So black and white is having a moment. Blues are still really strong. Um, gray is changing. Gray is becoming more grayish, a little bit, has a little bit more of a brown undertone to it. Um, it's warmer. I wouldn't call it brown, but it definitely is, is warming up. Um, but truly and really, if you want to do a gorgeous deep navy on your walls, why not do it? I mean, blue is trending, but I, I would, in a powder room especially, I would, I would just go for a color that you're just absolutely loving. And that makes sense in your home. Um, but from a trend perspective, black and white is having a huge moment. 
Um, warmer grays, all the blues are really quite active. Not seeing much in the way of yellow, not seeing, unless it's a goldenrod, but even goldenrod is cooling off a little bit in popularity. I still love it. I've always loved it. I think it's a great splash color. Not seeing a lot of red in trend and orange. Mm, definitely not seeing a lot of orange in trend. So hopefully that helps you. If you have a follow-up, by all means, zip it in there and I'm happy to take it. Okay, so Emily is saying, what can I put over the toilet? There's already art on the opposite wall and it's a blank white wall. Well, Emily, do you need something there? You could either do a companionable piece of art, something smaller, why not? Something that will be in happy conversation with what's happening across from it. But do you need something there? Maybe you just have a, I don't know, a really high quality faux orchids. You've got some height there. Or maybe you just have nothing. You just have a toilet, a tissue box on, on the, uh, the tank. I don't think there has to be something everywhere. That's me. Um, but I, my first instinct would be to do something else in art, but not to argue with your really big piece across the way, but I'm big on nothing, uh, across the way on the toilet tank. I just let it be. Throw on a little tissue holder. There it is. Um, Emily is also saying, what are my thoughts on peel and stick wallpaper? You know, Emily, I've heard good things about it. I have zero experience with it because our client base is asking for, applied papers. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what though. Here's what I think. Uh, we almost did a, a removable paper for a client of ours in a condominium in Philadelphia. And she, she may be moving out of that apartment in two years. And she said, you know, I want to take it down. Believe it or not, when we priced it out, I think we looked at uh, the product temp paper, T E M P A P E R. When we priced out how much we would need the cost to bring in somebody to apply it, the cost for the labor to take it down and if there needs to be any wall repair hopefully there wouldn't have been it's a temporary paper but you never know but just just the product and the professional services to put it up it was it wasn't that much of a it wasn't that much of a savings for us instead what we did this was not in a bathroom this was in in a on a wall in a dining area we framed big panels of it so that she could take this wallpaper with her so my thoughts on temp paper is I've not worked with it personally. I can't tell you, or the, the, the peel and sticks, can't tell you what their um, performances, performance is like. And certainly if somebody has anything to weigh in on, by all means put it in there. And I can't really weigh in on cost compared to having the guy come in and put up everything else. But I've heard good things about it, and I'm getting hearts on that. So there it is. Uh, JB is, uh, can is saying, in a powder room, can you use decorative drying towels instead of a cloth towel? Yes, by all means. That's a great point. Um, you can definitely make a hand towels, disposable pretty hand towels, part of your accessory story. Put it in a pretty um, holder if you have the space for it. Or if not, just fan out a couple and just leave them there. Or have them in a stack and, and, and there it is. So yeah, anything that is out technically in a powder room starts to look like the accessorization. And those really functional items, like these disposable hand towels, definitely make them, you know, be make everything beautiful. It's sort of like what Van J. Truix said, that great design quote, let nothing be in your home that is not um, and very functional and very beautiful, preferably both, right? So in a bathroom, that is so, so true. It needs to be highly functional, sh functional, should be beautiful as well, right? If you can combine those two, you're, you're golden. Um, okay. Getting hello from Delaware from Bertine. Hello from, hello back to you, Bertine. Um, uh, Missy Steinhardt has said, should your towel supply be hidden or is it okay to have on open shelving? I think it's beautiful to show your rolled towel supply or folded towel supply. One of my students in, uh, I think Decorating Genies did a fantastic, ah, oh, gorgeous bathroom renovation using my, my online course, Decorating Genius, Seven Simple Steps to Reno. Uh, some, seven Simple simple Steps to, to Great Rooms, which you can use it for Reno too. And um, she had a beautiful story that she created on cantilevered thick shelves and she had stacked towels. I think it can look very spa. I think it looking very beautiful. In my own bathroom, uh, master bath we have rolled bath towels to the side of the tub and when i use when i take a bath i take one of them pop it behind my head dry myself off with one so i use them but we display them in that way so they're handy there and um and i stack them in threes you know it's just two and then when i make a little pyramid of it because it's just the two of us so i think 
doing that sort of display. Um, certain uh, bathroom cabinetry designs that I've worked on will have an open shelf down below in a, in a guest bath or a powder room and down below in the cabinetry, right? So you've got cabinet doors and then an open shelf and we'll roll towels in there and it looks fantastic and there's your there's there's your towel display and if you're doing a bathroom reno and you're short on space in a linen closet think about doing something where you can incorporate your storage and your display in that kind of way it's a great space saver too so great the guys are asking great questions missy that was a great question so thank you lisa is saying what is a good way to choose towel and rug colors that's a really good question um it's always a last thought for me i designed the bathroom and once i know what my splash color is i often i'll do that in the towels and 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 rug but sometimes you don't want a splash color sometimes you want it to be just a very soft spa kind of something so i would design your entire space first and then decide what you want to do with those towels and most powder rooms and most guest baths and most master baths probably have a bigger range of towel splash colors than you think they do right so you can experiment more although a master bath you want to try to keep that color palette commensurate with the master bedroom right it's called the ensuite bath so if you, maybe you have a a bathroom for your kids it's a jack and jill bath and two two bedrooms share that one bathroom you know, you want to have a cohesion between the palette that's in that bathroom and what's happening in those related bedrooms as well. Hope I answered you well. And if you have a more specific question, you can scooch it in there. Although I got to go soon. I'm, last call. Two more Two more questions. I actually have a conference call in 15 minutes. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so Sylvia is telling us about Miracles in the Sun, A Course in Miracles. Okay. I, I, I like of course miracles but Sylvia we don't promote other products um, so you're gonna take your we're gonna take that comment down so please don't post promoting other comments and thing uh, other products and stuff just being honest with you this is a uh, this is our feed so we we, we control what, what content gets put out here but thank you though for for uh, posting for, for the moment Becky is saying I have a long counter with two sinks what about a tray to consolidate some pretties in the middle? What accessories would look interesting? Love the idea of the tray. Like we said earlier, Becky, it's a great way to unify things. Um, so it depends on what the pretties are, that it doesn't look like clutter. Maybe there's a plant in there in a pretty container. Remember, the container is as important as the plant in design. So, uh, you know, putting something larger to anchor, and then you've got some smaller things around, it could be a larger piece of pottery that's there and then smaller things around or something in a larger silver something. Is it a sculpture or something, vase kind of something, or tabletop sculpture? That's a possibility as well. Uh, Sally is saying hello. It's her first life. And Becky, if that helps, I hope, I hope that helps you. I hope that was enough. Uh, Sally's saying hi. It's her first live, live session in a while. Good to watch, watch us from Niceville, Florida. Sally is, Sally is such a doll. I'm not surprised that she lives in Niceville, Florida. Great town. And then last question here from um, Lisa McLaughlin. Um, I'm sorry, Lisa. It's not your name. It's my husband's handwriting. What color towels for a grayish wall and a sea drift gray wood? Lisa, babes, I need to see a picture to be able to answer you well. Can't even give you a good answer there. So I'm going to take one more question. Um, if you were one of my students, I don't believe you are, it's Lilas, I'm sorry. If you were one of my students, you'd have access to our private Facebook groups where people can post pictures and, and have the whole team weigh in as well as the whole Facebook community, the private community. But during these live feeds, if I need to see a picture to be able to answer you, then I'm, I can't take your question because I would do you a disservice if I answered you without seeing what you needed me to see. So there it is. Not trying to be a meanie, actually trying to take good care of you. Um, so Lisa is saying in each of my bathrooms, the builder put the towel bars in the middle of the plain walls oh, where I would normally place artwork. What's with them builders? Mm. Ay, 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 I'm aggravated for you. Okay. So if I'm not going to move the towel bar, should I put the art above them? Yeah, I would do it. I would do that. I'd rather move the towel bar, but if that's too much of a pain in the fabric bolt, see if you can get some art above that. Uh, I feel like I may be drawing attention to the towels. If it's really good art, you're going to draw attention to the art, not to the towels. Um, but, B 
best plan, the most elegant plan, is always to correct the problem so you don't have to band-aid it. So if it's possible to move your towel bar, I would do that first. I realize that's a pain in the rear end, but pulling that down, you got to fill in the wall, repaint, yada yada. But that's the most elegant solution, right? If you need the cheapest, fastest solution, leave it how it is and try a piece of artwork above. Live with that and see if, if that'll do it for you. Alrighty? Listen, guys, I know there are more questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to them all. There are way more of you than there are of me. Next time, get here early and get your question in faster or earlier so I can get to you. All right, lovelies, next week we are talking about what to look for in an ideal dining room table. What to look for in an ideal dining room table. And I will cover kitchen tables too. And an ideal dining table will broaden it, okay? Because I have some definite opinions and some important advice for you if you are in the market for a dining table. Certain things that drive people bananas if you don't think about them first and foremost. Alrighty? So I will see you next week, 4 p.m. Eastern. I'll try to connect my brain and my teeth next time so I'm not fumfering so much. Fumper, fumper, fumper. It was great seeing you dolls. I love spending time with you and I will see you next and the, and the devos also, the gentleman who may, the one guy that may be here. Uh, we'll see you next week, 4 p.m. Eastern. Bye everybody. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.